Okay, so once we have everything set up, that is connected, we're good to go. Um, you may be thinking, well, is it really working? Um, instead of viewing the console, you can see that it is connected to your uh, MQTT server. But if you want to test it out just to see if everything's working, there is an application you can go ahead and download called MQTT.fx. And then you can just go ahead and click on settings, enter in the Raspberry Pi's URL or your uh, MQTT server's URL. Go ahead and enter in your user credentials, hit apply, and you can go ahead and connect to it and it'll look something like this. Then all you do is you go ahead and uh, once you're connected to it, you go ahead and click on subscribe and you just put in the hash, which means it's going to go ahead and subscribe to all of the topics that is within uh, the MQTT server. So we go ahead and hit subscribe. And as you can see, it does show there's already one message that's being sent. Um, in that specific topic and that's the topic that all of your message is going to be sent to so if we go ahead and we do have this log file right uh, we do have the son of bridge open right here at the back as well um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and i still have the sensor right here so if i go ahead and open it you'll see it's going to go ahead and generate that message and you'll see right here it sends that message in here and it also shows in the log that it did send that message and then if you bring it back it's going to send another message with the closed signal so that's what we're going to go ahead and add into our home assistant itself there we go guys so in our configuration yaml file um as I've shown you guys before, um, it's fairly easy to get to. All you need to do is you just go in to type into hasio.local and then config, go to the config folder and then open up your configuration.yaml file. And then it should look similar to this. You'll have all the information listed of all the previous stuff we've added. And then I just added some lines here just called binary sensor. If you put in a hash in there, um, it's not gonna count that into the code. So what I did is I don't have any binary sensors in here yet. So I added in a binary sensor. Now remember, you can only have one binary sensor header, but you can have multiple underneath it. So within the platform, that's why you usually go in and add in some headings in here. So you have a way of identifying these specific headings. So we have our binary sensor and then we have the code that we're going to use that will communicate with Home Assistant. So in here, I have this one configured already that, that I've preset up. So it's fairly simple. We have platform, which is MQTT. That's the way that it will go ahead and send the messages. The state topic is going to be the topic that it'll receive those messages on. So remember, um, it's sending all the messages right in here uh, to the state, to that specific topic. And then we have the name of that specific sensor listed right here. I'm going to call it my living room window one. And then we have a value template. That's just some additional information that's needed. Um, if you do run into errors, that's very, it's highly preferable. You can just go ahead and add this in here as well. And that should solve any problems that you may have. Um, then we have payload on and payload off. Now, these sensors has two messages, one for when it's open and one for when it is being closed again. So what happens is if I go ahead and look in the console, it just fell, so it just opened up. But as you can see, it, it went ahead and sent that message for open. And then if I put it back again, it is going to go ahead and close it. And I'll have a link down below. It's one, it's the same ones that Dr. Z's also used in his video. It is very cool sensors. So I have that listed in there for open and close. And then device class is just going to be for the icon that will show up in your home assistant. So you can go ahead and write down all the codes for all your sensors and add them in here in one, one time, or you can do one and then just copy all of them over and just rename and replace all the information. I'll have this code listed down below. You can go ahead and copy and paste that and add it into your home assistant if you do have these sensors or something similar. So once you've added that in, uh, because we made changes to the configuration YAML file, you need to go ahead and save that. And then once you save it, save it you need to restart Home Assistant before they will go ahead and show up in your 
Home Assistant installation. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. There we go. So that went ahead and restarted. There was an error with my code, uh, just to show you guys exactly what happened. Um, what I did was here, uh, the code, the topic was incorrect. It had RF bridge in here. And then when I looked in this topic, so that's a good thing to test the one first before adding in everything because then you need to fix everything so just add one first test it out um, all i did was i just copied this topic uh, so it has the correct topic listed right here and then restarted it and what i did was i went in here added the entity and as you can see if i edit this one i just added the sensor the living room window which is the living room window one right here and everything is exactly the same as it previously was listed. I just updated the topic to the correct one. So it did show up, but nothing updated. And then I realized I may have the incorrect topic listed. So I just fixed that real quick and then we're good to go. So that's connected. So what happens is I'm going to go ahead and remove that. So it is open and there we go. It changed to open. So if we close it back up again, it went closed there we go and that should be it so i'm gonna go ahead and add six more i need to order more of them and then in the future i still have some pir sensors that's also coming that also uses the rf and i may have some buttons that's coming so instead of using a wi-fi button an rf button is going to be way more efficient but we'll get to that as we move along in the setup there we go, so it's about a week later and I finally got my uh, PIR or motion sensor, this one right here, it's the one from Sonoff itself and I'll have a link for this one in the description as well. But what this one does is it only sends one message as soon as it detects motion, as you can see I'm moving this and it is sending that one code the whole time, so it's not sending an off code. Now what happens is within... Um, the Mosquito server, so the MQTT message, is only going to send this specific message each time it sees movement. Now the problem with this is within Home Assistant itself, it's as soon as it triggers the first time, it changes the state to detected, it's going to stay to movement detected and it won't change back to clear again like right here. So a way around it is we're going to go ahead and set up an automation. Now you can do this within the Home Assistant interface. However, I'm going to leave code down below, which you can just go ahead and copy and paste in. So what I did was I added it in just like a normal, uh, normal sensor. So we have the platform and exactly the same as the previous sensors. The only difference in here is for payload off. I just copied the same code and just added in off in there. Now, what we'll do is, because the Home Assistant is not directly communicating with the son of there, just using a MQTT server as a bridge between the two, we can go ahead and set up an automation that'll go ahead and send a message after, say, about five seconds after they receive this message to turn off or send the off command via MQTT again. So. Once we have this added in here, all we need to do is we can open up our automations.yaml file. It's in the exact same folder as in the configuration. So you see there's one for automations. So I do have the previous ones that we set up just for those notifications. So it's going to be listed in there. But it's fairly simple. I'll leave this right down below in the description as well. So what it basically is, um, it's going to uh, give it a name. So just the name of that sensor and then the initial state. So as soon as we uh, set it up and platform is just state. And then for the entity ID, we're going to give it that uh, living room sensor. Remember that's the entity ID name within home assistant after we have added this sensor. And then as soon as it changes from off to on, meaning that it did detect movement, it's going to go ahead and wait for five seconds listed right here so it's going to go ahead and send an mqtt message so publish in that same topic with that message the payload and this is the off payload that we have in our configuration.yaml that'll go ahead and turn off the sensor again so every five seconds um, as soon as it receives movement you'll see it's clear and as soon as i move it'll say detected and then it's going to wait for five seconds and it's going to automatically send a clear 
message because it's sending that message via um, our automation that we have set up. And that's going to be it for this one, guys. Um, I hope there was some information in there that was quite useful. If you guys do get stuck, you know where to reach me. You can go ahead and comment down below. So this may have been split into two parts. Uh, if it did, I'm sorry, but I really need to get all the content in there as much as possible. As I've said, I'm going to go ahead and add six of those sensors um, for six windows. And then once that's added in there, um, when we do the next video, there's going to be six of those window sensors in there. So that's just so you guys know, um, I'm not I'm adding that off camera, so I don't have to waste a lot of time with useless stuff that you guys need to see me copying and pasting all the additional sensors in there. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week.